Uh, today we're going to build a uh, an express API. I'm going to try to go through this pretty pretty quick, and you'll have to uh, forgive me for some of the noise out here because I'm at a Starbucks. Um, don't know what to do about that. So here we are. Here's what we're going to do. I just created a new folder called Build Express API. We're going to go down here. We're going to open a new window with VS Code. We're going to drag that folder over here, and now. We're in VS Code in our folder. That means when I pull up my terminal, I use Control Escape or Control Tilde or whatever it is to do that. Um, Control Tilde. Uh, you can see I'm in the Build Express API by default. Every time I open a new terminal, I will always be in this beginning folder. First thing we're going to do, uh, I'm going to look at what version of Node I'm running. This is 14.2.0. Let's do NVM use uh, v16. And now I should be using Node 16, okay? Um, just for shits and giggles, that's what version of npm I'm using. First thing I'm going to do: npm in, uh, sorry, npm in it. <coughs> We're just going to tap through here, put my name in it. This is okay. Here we have a package JSON file. Cool. We're going to install. NPM install express. Cool. Now we have express. Now we're going to NPM install. I'm going to use nodemon for development and we're going to do dash dash save dash dev. This is going to save it as a development dependency. Cool. Now with those things installed, you see them here in the in the file, we should be able to just change. I don't need a test script to run right now. I just need to be able to run my server. I'm going to do that with nodemon. I'm going to say nodemon. Uh, we're going to call it main.js. Cool. Save that. I would run that with npm start, and it will run nodemon main.js. But as you can see here, nodemon is complaining, saying, hey, we don't have a main.js. So we're going to go over here and make a main.js. All right. Now, the very first thing we're going to do here, uh, I'm going to have to pull up my, my notes on my side here. So first thing we're going to do, and I'm being very intentional here. Normally you would do maybe a const. I'm actually going to do a var here, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we're going to say var express equals require express. Oops. That brings on our express application. Um, and we're going to do, actually this, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. This can be a const. And we're going to say var app equals express. This needs to be a var. I'll tell you why soon. Um, and then we're going to, uh, what is it, app.listen. And we're going to pass a function to app.listen. And, uh, and, oh, sorry, but first we're going to pass in a port number. We'll, we'll just put, pass it in manually, port 3000. Uh, and I'm just going to spell out function. And uh, module.exports equals app. And here we're going to console log. Server is running on port, and we'll pass it in here just like that. Pretty handy. Okay, so the big thing I want to show you here now is we're going to bring in uh, environment variables. So we want two environment variables. Um, they're going to be consts because they're never going to change. Uh, one's going to be H HTTP port. If only I could type. And it's process.env.node port is what I'm going to use, or 9000. So if this isn't set, we're going to default to port 9000. Copy this line, and we're going to do node. Uh, yeah, actually, let's just do it like that node env and HTTP port. Change this to node env. And again, if it's not set, we're just going to default to development. Then down here, I can replace this with our HTTP port here and here. 
uh, and is running on port blah in blah mode, period. All right. Now let's go down here and look at what this is saying. Oh, it wants it wants to find index. This I'm going to change to main. You might want to change that to main too. I'm calling it main. You could call it index. I like main. Main makes sense to me. Let's kill this and rerun it. Cool. Server's running on port 9000 in development mode. Making progress. All right. And the reason it's doing 9000 in development mode is because these environment variables aren't set. So one of the things I want to do is go here into my start and make another one called prod. Uh, and here in the start, we're going to say node env equals development and node uh, yeah, HTTP port equals 3000. Now these are, this is like, this command is like something that will run down here in the terminal, like normal command line Linux or Windows terminal. And this is just one way of passing environment variables in. So I'm going to copy this and uh, put it there and change this to production. So now, when I say npm start, it should run. Nope. What I miss? Go back. HTTP port should be HTTP port. So now when I run it and start, it's on port 3000 in development mode. When I npm run prod 3000 production mode. Cool. We're going to run it in development mode. So we have an express application. We have some ports coming in. I like to kind of put these things up at the top with the requires. And we're starting our app and then we're listening for our app. Okay, cool. Now we're going to add a couple things to this. Um, and one of them is uh, now that we have an express thing going, I like to disable the uh, the powered by message so that if you know there's something going on, somebody can't query your server and find out, oh, it's running express. It just makes it harder for hackers to get in. It's just like a standard thing I like to do. But also for illustration, you see uh, express has a bunch of default settings and we can disable a setting by using the dot disable. And this is a thing that's you know, in Express, you would look up the documentation for like app.disable on Express. And you can see all kinds of things that you can enable or disable with Express. Um, of course, it has a default setting, so there's not a lot of configuration necessary out of the box. We have things from this file up here in main that we want to be able to pass down and make available everywhere else in our app, such as like a database handler. That way we have our database handler set up and imported here once and then we can access it on any route. And the way we do that is by taking our database handler when it comes in and attaching it to our Express uh, instance here. So one of, the, one of the ways you can do that, it's built into Express, is this app.locals, and we'll just call it anything I want. Uh, app.locals exists, and it's an object. Just set a string, some data or something. And we'll just look at how that works later. This is very convenient for passing specifically like database handlers down. That's what we're going to do with it. Um, <clears throat> cool. So now we're going to do like a route, right? If we just save this and we see it's running 3000 in development mode and let's just open a new browser, local host port 3000, we're going to get an error message. It says it cannot get slash. That's because slash does not exist. We haven't specified any routes. The server is running. It's in memory. It's waiting for connections. And when this connection comes, it says, hey, I don't know what to do with this route. And that's what Express, uh, Express Router is for. I'm going to show you a really simple one. We use app.use, and we specify this is optional. And then um, I think we, it's just express.static and say public. And then we'll go over here and make a, not a file, a folder called public. And in public, we're going to make a file called index.html, and it's just going to say hi. This should have caught that change when I save the file. And we refresh it. And now, whenever you go to the slash route, it goes to hi. Um, this is the route we're going to in the browser, and this is the folder. In this case, express.static is serving everything in this folder. So if I copy this and call it other.html, and it says, Hello again, and we save it. We see we're still seeing the index. 
we say other.html, and now we see hello again. Very simple, we're serving whatever files here are accessible at that route. Now, usually we're gonna make those accessible at like, let's say, um, a public route, slash public. So now we come here, oh, there's nothing there, because it's now been moved to the slash public, oops, public route. Cool. And if we don't specify a file, as with most web servers and browser configuration, it's gonna look for an index file, uh, something index.htm, index.html, index.something. That's typically what they're going to try to pull up by default if you don't specify a file. Here we're specifying the public folder. It goes to pull the index.html file out um, automatically. Okay, there's our route. So we could just have a whole bunch of routes here for a whole bunch of things, but we're going to use something called uh, Express Router. And Express Router is going to make it nice for us to just keep our server file here simple and put all of our routes in another file. We'll call it API, it's just a variable name. And it's gonna require, uh, that's it. Is it routers slash index.js, I don't know. We'll, we'll call it API. We're gonna access it, we're gonna have a single route here so here we're pointing to a file, and whatever that file exports is saved in this API variable. And now we're going to do an app.use and say if any request comes to slash API, we're going to pass it to this API function. It, it's a function. It's going to be a function. And, and understand, app.use, app when, when we're using app.use, we specify a route, and in, in the case up here, uh, when we did this, we did uh, express.static, and that's, and that's a function, but here you recognize that this takes a, a function and it gets two parameters, uh, three parameters actually. It's a request, a response, and next. We're not going to look at next right now because I don't think that matters. But when a, when a request comes in, the, the request object has a bunch of data on it. So if we do this, and we can say we can say response dot send, okay. Uh, yeah, and so when we go here and we refresh, I might have an error. What's it say? Oh, it can't find the module. Right, I haven't done this yet. Comment that out. Save it. Should be running again. Refresh. All right, we see okay. But then down here in our terminal, we can see that console log uh, from from right here. This is the request object. This, this is an object that represents what's coming in from my browser to the server. And so if we look closely in here, we might be able to find in our request, there is also that app.locals object that we mentioned above. And I just want you to see it so you understand where it's coming from. And where it's going and so this all, all this stuff is just like information about the request generally speaking we can say instead of doing this we can just request request um, dot app dot locals let's do that give us some space here run the server instead of hunting for it we'll refresh the page we reload this page and here I've um, printed out the uh, the app.locals object. We can see x.poweredby is false. And we see here that anything I want, some data or something. Okay. So instead of just doing this, um, we, we'll, call this we'll call this a debug route. And now we can put some things in here uh, in the future to check. This will tell us like whether or not we have cookies. We, we can even parse a thing like a JSON object up and send it to the browser. So you can just hit a route and say, what, what, tell me about my server. What do I have configured right now? What's going on? So we'll do that later. But in the meantime, uh, we wanna go back here to our, to our express router. So we're gonna make a new folder and it's gonna be called uh, routers. And in the routers folder, we're gonna create a new file called api.js. Now, um, Give me one second. And some of this I might have to refigure out on my own. I don't have all the answers on the top of my head. Okay. 
<clears throat> so here we're going to pull in the express router that comes with express. We already have express installed, so we got var router equals require express like you normally would, but we're going to express that express object already comes with a router object. We're going to specify it there. So now we can require express and run the router thing that gives us a reference to the router. We don't have to overwrite variables a whole bunch and that's that's the router object that comes with express. Now what we're going to do in this file is um, we're going to export function and that function is going to be our router function. So in the same way that we had a function with the request and response here, here we're going to pass an object, but this function isn't going to be a regular function like this one. This one is going to be special. It's going to be a router function and it knows how to handle that. So we don't need to worry about the details. So this function is going to be passed to the API route. And in this function, because we're using the express router, we can specify a whole bunch of different um, of different uh, routes. And so we're going to call this uh, lowercase router equals router like that. And now we can say router.get instead of app.use. This is kind of the same thing as app.use over here, but now we're in a router context. We're using the router, so it's router.get. This get here refer references to the type of HTTP request it is. When you go to google.com, your browser says, hey Google, we can look this up real quick. HTTP get request headers. Here, here we go. <clears throat> so your headers may have something like this. This is the very first line of a header. It says get this page or this URL and here's the protocol, HTTP protocol, uh, protocol specification. This is the name of the website I want to get it from. This is the browser I'm using and the rest of the stuff is we don't really care about. What we really care about is this first word here, get. This means it's a get request. We're getting the content from this. We're just reading information. We're telling the server, I just want to get the contents of this file, nothing else. Now there's a bunch of different ones. There's post. Post instead of get. Post usually means you're sending information and you'll have extra little thing in here with post data, an extra header. Um, there's put, there's request, there's delete, and they all kind of have different kind of meanings to them, but they're all essentially doing the same thing, which is saying server, give me a page, and sometimes optionally, here's some data. So we can, we can use this in our, in our API to specify like a single URL, like um, slash API slash my content, whatever your content is, say customers. And then you can, if it's a get request, you're getting a customer. If you hit the delete route, you're deleting a customer. If you're using a put route, you're updating a customer, things like that. And it just makes it kind of nicer for you to keep your routes organized in, in this kind of way. So this is the kind of thing your browser would send to a web server and then the web server responds with some headers and then your, your actual HTML document, whatever it is. Okay, we can move on. Um, So router.get, and here we're specifying a route, and again, a request, a response, and, um, you know, res.send, good. Now, let's see if this works, and it says that can I find routers slash api.js, let me double check that that's all spelled correctly and probably have a misspelling somewhere or an extra slash yes here this is supposed to be dot slash routers slash app.js cool so if we do slash api <coughs> we should see what we're looking for but we don't why fantastic question routers Routers, R O U T E R S, slash API.js, API.js. Here at slash API, we're using our API variable. And for it slash debug, we're using that one. Um, in here, I'm just, just going to say it. Oh, just so I know. 
And so when I hit the slash API, I should be able to get this by default. It didn't send any data. So we got something else going on here. We're gonna have to explore. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, and I don't know what that would be off the top of my head. Ah, uh, yes. At the very end, because this is a function, we need to return the router. Uh, sorry, no parentheses, just the variable. All right, now we're exporting a function and the function returns the router. The router is getting these routes set on it here in the middle. Now, I might need to, because it's server side, I don't know that that matters or not, but. Huh. Slash API. Let's do some debugging. Sometimes things don't work, even though you read the docs and you're prepared, mostly. Uh, things sometimes still don't work. So let's request here. Here's our request. Wish I could see my screen a little clearer. You can see here's our core setting that's specified by the server, I think. Here's some headers. The response. I don't I don't understand what's going on here. That's really interesting. So let's go back. It's probably something in here. Probably a misspelling. And let me double check my notes. So var router require express router. Our express dot router and then module.exports, I could be exporting it wrong, equals function cool var router equals capital router and that's a function and router.get and we have a URL route and then we have request and response. Did I get these backwards? It's possible I got those backwards. Well, let's look it up. Express router. And, you know, that's just part of programming. Sometimes things don't work as you expect, and you gotta go read the docs. It's a little more complicated and convoluted because it's not always super clear. Um, router, express router, router.get, blah, blah, blah. Request is first. Response is second. res.end, use router. Hmm. So app.use router. Hmm. I think what it might be. Do I need to do it like that? Ah. Okay, so that's not so bad. Okay, so what happened? Why didn't that work? Well, we were, we were grabbing our file and we're grabbing the function, this function here. But what it really needed was a reference to the router object. And so here we're configuring and returning the router. We needed to run this function and not just reference this function. So that's kind of interesting because, you know, we could probably take this function off and do this a different way. We could just like do it like that and like that. Instead of returning router, we just like that. Does that work?
What's it say? Can't read properties under fine reading method. Main line 16. Main line 16 is here and said, hey, oh yeah. Duh. Okay, so now we're referencing the router that's exported here. This actual this actual router object gets configured and we're sending out that actual object. Now we refresh and we still get our page. Okay, so everything's working. So you can go ahead and update your route for this. And this will be just simpler, I think. We don't need to wrap it in functions, totally unnecessary. Understand you could if you wanted to, maybe you have multiple functions, multiple routers, you wanna <clears throat> reference one instead of another and keep them all in one file. There's all kinds of things you can do here for organization. But this is the bottom line. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is in our routers folder, we're gonna make a new folder and these are gonna be our routes. And these routes can be a number of different things. Um, so in, in what I typically do is I'll have like a route that interacts with the database. And we'll keep this simple at first and we'll just keep building on. Um, so let's just call this a API routes. And in our API routes, let's say we have, I, I gotta figure out what project we're building. Cause all this stuff is kind of general boilerplate, but I want you to be able to apply it to your own project. So I just wanna keep this simple and focused on repeatable concepts. Uh, once you have your router, you can figure out which routes you need and why based on what data you need to access and why. So in my case, let's say that I want to make something really simple. It could be anything. It could be a blog, blog post. We want to get blog posts. We want to get a list of users, a list of people for an address book. We want to get um, a list of inventory items for, for a, you know, a store or whatever. All kinds of ideas. So... Um, <clears throat> Let's let's do let's do blogs, just a, a a content an article articles articles newspaper, um, and these will be called um, articles, uh, content, posts blog posts okay, we'll call it posts.js. So let's review for a second, really quick. Here is our, our main server, and this is our route, our routes, our API route, slash API. Once we get to our, uh, that's our, sorry, our API router. Once we get into our router, we're specifying any, anything in the URL after the API. So notice this is API slash, the API slash defaults to slash let's let's add another route here and say like other thing this just other and we'll say in all caps other now it's api slash other gives us the other page notice that the api isn't specified here it's just says slash other but it's in the context of slash api here so any route that starts with slash api will automatically execute here and if it hits a route, it hits a route. Otherwise, it'll continue, the request continues down through. It says, oh, it doesn't match this one, it doesn't match this one, or maybe it does. Everything will match this. If, if you type in a URL, like slash API, and this app.use didn't exist, but this one, this one did, um, potentially it could match this if this was like, how to, I don't know how to explain this. Like, let's say we have an API route, and then let's say we had another one that was like API things. If you had a route that was like slash API slash index and you move this down, uh, just slash slash API, it would actually match, it would match this first potentially. So like the order matters. I guess we'll talk about that more later when it comes up naturally. I don't, I don't wanna talk too much about those things. So slash API, it's this API router. We go in here, we have an other route and a default route. So if you go to slash API, it'll send, um, Please, um, I'll just let's say 
you know, nothing, nothing here. And, and in the future here, what we could do is put some instructions for accessing an API if it was publicly consumable. Or we might just return, um, I, think, I think you can just do error. Like, let's do um, express uh, dot get, or express um, return error 404. Uh, to redirect uh, it's like res dot error or something oh res dot status that's what we want right there boom so what we'll do is we'll put this here 404 now this is kind of cool now if we just go to slash API that did save right we should get a 404. And we still get our other here. Hmm. And you can, oh, we need to end it. So send, um, sorry, there was an error. 404. So now we're returning some custom content, but we're specifying that this is not a 200 OK. This is an error 404 page indicating it's an error page. And uh, your browser will understand what that means. So now we have a proper proper response there. OK, so let's move on. So um, we're going to get our blog posts, right? So uh, what we're going to do here, this is the way I like to do it. You can do it another way when you see what's going on here. You can require a file here, and whatever it requires can return here, right? Return to this router.get is the second parameter. So here we're gonna we're gonna require uh, API routes slash hosts. Now when we hit the posts route, we're gonna get this JavaScript file, which brings us here. This is where the kind of magic starts to happen. Um, so let's look at here. Okay, so this is just a function, and we're going to export it from this file. So we'll start off with a modules dot exports equals function, and and this function is expected to be passed in as uh, a route handler. So we have a, uh, a request and a response. And uh, at, at the end of the, it's somewhere in here, we're gonna have to run a res dot something to like get a response out of it, just like a normal route. But in this case, this is where we're going to start looking at what we're doing for MySQL. So in order to do a database thing here and to do it conveniently, like we could just do like res.send uh, and, and before then we'll do like let, let data equals some object, my data, some value, other array, you know, one, two, whatever and then go to send here and say data, I'm sorry, it's, it's json.stringify data. This takes our native JSON object and converts it to a JSON string to be sent as plain text. So now when we go API slash posts, we should at least get a thing from this. Modules, it's not modules, is it? It's module. module.exports. Sometimes I kill the server and restart it if I don't see an error right away because I don't care for reading all these things because most of it is not helpful stuff. But here, okay. So now we see we're getting some data. Now we need to get this data instead of just specifying it and getting it, now we need to do it from a database. So we're gonna kill the server and we say npm install um, mysql. Cool. We can go back and look at our package.json. 
Now we have MySQL. That's great. Now, when you add MySQL to an Express server, I think it's a good idea, and there's lots of different ways to do that, I think it's a good idea to put it at the beginning of your server um, in, in this beginning portion, because anything, absolutely anything in the backend server here may potentially use your MySQL uh, connection. So I think it's good to like do this uh, here. But we're not going to just import MySQL. What we're actually going to do is we're going to make ourselves a plugins folder. And that plugins folder uh, will have other things in it maybe later on, but for now we're going to have just a mysql.js. And in our main, we're going to, um, yeah, like, yeah, maybe, okay, we'll just do it here. We'll, and we'll say um, var mysql. You can name it however you want. I just call it mysql equals require. Uh, plugin slash MySQL, and then the important thing. While we're still here, we're gonna get the. We're gonna go worry about what this file does in a second. But we're gonna take that reference, and we're gonna put it down here. App dot locals dot MySQL. Let's lowercase this. My MySQL. Actually, that's bad because this file is also named MySQL. When I try to import MySQL from the MySQL fi file into itself, because it's named MySQL, it's gonna be like, uh, MySQL.js is itself, it's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna reference this file, it's not gonna reference what's in our node modules folder. So we're actually gonna change this, so it's just like, like MySQL um, connection. MySQL connection, sure, okay. MySQL connection. And here, uh, my, MySQL, MySQL, yeah, let's go back to that. All right, and we'll reference it like that, so it's just consistent. Okay, now we have our MySQL object's gonna be attached here, we're gonna pass it down to our routes so we can use it all the way out here at our posts. But before we can do that, we gotta do our MySQL connection. So let's jump over and do that really quick. And I know this all seems confusing, so we could go look at the docs, and, and MySQL has uh, lots, of, well, lots of documentation. It's really not hard to set up. We're just going to do this really simply. We're going to say var mysql equals require. This is the one from our node modules folder, mysql. That's our library we installed. And then here we have like our uh, credentials and stuff. And so we're, we're going to make this up. We're going to, we're going to have a, um, a variable for host. And in my case, it's going to be localhost. Um, we have a user, which I typically use root. Uh, there is a password, let's call it pass, and we have a database equals um, you know, my, my blog, or just, just blog, we'll call it blog. I don't have a MySQL server running at this particular time, and that's like a whole other video. We'll have to cover that in a separate thing. If you already have MySQL running, just go ahead and punch in your credentials there. We're going to move on now. Um, so the first thing I need to do is uh, var my uh, SQL database equals mysql.createpool. That one and then in the pool we're going to pass it our object for uh, connecting we have our host we have our port we have user we have a password We have a database. We have a connection limit. I'm gonna set that to 300 consecutive connections. I, I don't think that'll be a problem or anything we need to do. We're gonna say wait for connections is true. The uh, queue UE, UE limit 
is 300. And um, acquire timeout, 60 seconds, 60,000 milliseconds. Timeout, 60, one minute. And yeah, we could just do like 10. And we'll, we'll never hit these. We're running a local host. But I like, these are like the things that I like to have in here by default. They're specified, so if I need to change them, I don't need to go Google it. It's here already. I just change the value. If you set debug to true, you're going to get some information when a connection fails. But you don't need to see pages of MySQL debug information 99% of the time. So I leave this here, but I set it to false. I see I spelled that wrong. Okay. So there's our MySQL create pool. And... Let me check my notes here. Now, I think we just module dot exports equals uh, MySQL DB. So this will create a connection, and then you'll continue on with the rest of your script. But there's a little problem, is that perhaps this doesn't connect right away, and you go on with the rest of your script you may want to try to reconnect, or you might want to see some debug information that verifies that you have actually connected. So if this connection is successful, we should immediately run a small little test that says, hey, connection was good. And we do that by writing a query. And this is the same query that we're going to write in our, in our routes, but we're going to do it here since we now have a MySQL connection potentially. We're just going to run a query. And this query is not going to get data from a table, but it's just going to do a, uh, a simple little database query, do some math, select 1 plus 1 as solution. That's our query. A query gets a the MySQL connection query function gets a first parameter, that's your query, and a and a second callback kind of function, we have error, we have results, and we have fields, which we probably won't use. And we say, in this particular case, I'm going to try if error, we're going to throw new error and say no database connection otherwise if we have a good database connection we could just say console.log database connection good and, and in this case, we'll say database. So we know which table we're connected to in case we forget. It's in our console down here. Um, and some of these now, some of these things I specified I didn't actually uh, write out. So we need a couple of these other things. Var port. There is a default, I think it's 30, is it 3306, 3305. What's the default MySQL port? Mm, give me a second. I have this in my notes. Or I used to have this in my notes. We'll just Google it. Google default MySQL port number 3306. That's the default port number. And from my experience, I know that to be true. Just couldn't remember. All right, so we have a port. I misspelled password, host, port, user, password, database, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. So now when we go back here and run, oops, npm start in development mode, plugins MySQL connection, I did not name that correctly. Plugins, 
Oh, I'm, I put this in the wrong folder. It's supposed to be, plugins is supposed to be in the root directory. Just to take a look, in our root directory at this point, we should have package and package lock files in our main.js, a routers folder, a public folder, and a plugins folder, and our no modules folder. The plugins folder has MySQL connection. So, let's rerun the server. MySQL connection line 32. Oh, well, I need to catch what I'm trying. So let's, let's go back and look at that really quick. Um, catch the error. And we can say console.warn. No, we can say console.error. And hopefully that tells us things. So in this case, server is running. Great. Oh, but there's an error. There's no database connection. Why? Because I don't have a database running. So I should have Docker installed in here. And I should be able to spin up a MySQL server pretty quickly. If you don't have a MySQL server installed, uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, you could do it with Docker. Uh, you could just install MySQL server directly. I don't know why it's taking so long. Well, I have a thing running here, and it has MySQL and PHP MyAdmin. So I'm going to switch over and look at my repos. I should have one in here called base. And in base, uh, I have the Docker Compose file. Can I open with? Sure, I just need to see it. Let's look at our let's look at our Docker Compose file really quick. I just need to find out my MySQL root user and my password. I don't know what they are. I'm going to minimize that. I need the I need to get back here. So what I'm going to do really quickly open a new window. And I'm going to drag base into here. Full screen this and work over here for a second. There's my password. All right, so now I should be able to jump back over. Oh, I minimized it. I should be able to jump back over to my express thing here and go into MySQL connection, put my password here. And I know I don't have a database blog. I still didn't connect. So let's say, set this to true, refresh. Let me get a whole bunch of other stuff here and I can't tell where it starts and where it ends. Let me put a little space and start it again so I can find the top very quickly. And we can see, client authorization package, user root, the error package, unknown database blog. Cool. So because my uh, Docker is also running this PHP MyAdmin utility, I think it's on route 5050. I should be able to say root. Oh, oops. This is localhost root 
my password. There we go. So I'm just going to go new database. We're going to call it blog, create. And while I'm here, I'm going to make my posts table and we're going to keep it simple. The post has an ID, it has a title, it has content, and it has updated. And let's go ahead and add, um, well, we'll save that first. Before we do, um, the title is uh, Varchar, 255 characters, the content is text, and the update, uh, what's your date time? Date time. The ID is a primary key and it's auto-incremented, and I'll save this. Uh, update is a reserved keyword. Oh, well look at that. I might not be able to delete it even. Oh, good lucky me. Okay, we're gonna add two more tables. Uh, after content, okay. Here I'm gonna create um, up, updated at, that sounds good. Updated at and a created at, and these are date, uh, date time. I'm going to type that on the keyboard, date time. It jumps to the one that's alphabetically close. All right, five tables, updated at, created at, content, title, and ID. Of course, in your blog, you might want an author and some bunch of other stuff, but for now, this will be good. I got 10% battery left, so we're going to have to wrap this up pretty quick, and I'm going to go ahead and insert a one thing, title, test, content, hello world, and go. And notice I didn't specify an ID, but it automatically got ID 1 because that's the next one that's supposed to be done. If I was to insert again and say test 2, hello again, and hit go, it's automatically going to give me ID 2. So I don't need to worry about setting an ID. It's always going to give me the next ID when I'm adding content. If I want to uh, uniquely identify one of these entries, I'm going to do so with the ID column. The column with ID 2 since these are auto increment and they're unique, they're primary keys, if I say select everything from posts where ID equals two, it's gonna give me this second blog post entry. Okay, there's our database. We got some fake content. Um, leave my SQL or PHP running over there. Okay, now we can go back and write our thing. So if we kill this and run it again, oh, and let's go ahead and set this to false so we don't have to see all that. Kill it, run it again. Cool, now we're good. Now, the last thing we need to do is go over to our posts. And instead of just returning this, we're gonna do a MySQL connection. And so to do that, I need to pull up my notes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is pull in our database connection. And you're, if you remember, um, we did that by attaching it here as MySQL on app.locals. I don't need that, and I don't need that right now. We just need these two. I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that. It's good to occasionally clean up your working area so you don't get confused. So let's just delete this here. Um, we're, gonna, we're just gonna call this uh, con for connection and it's equal to the request.app.locals.mysql. There's our connection. So now we can say dot, uh, con.query and we can run a query just like we did in our MySQL plugin. Um, okay, and so now we have our MySQL. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna say connection.query. Oh, let me think about that for a second. We're not gonna do a query we're gonna get connection. It's a little bit different. Get connection is going to, um, it's going to take a callback function. And it gets a parameter and error. And we're gonna call it, spell it out connection. So it's going to provide those things to us here in, in this. And um, the way that I've done this in the past, it's a little 
complicated, but uh, I use promise chains. And the reason I do promise chains is so that I can work with the data before it goes out. See, the idea is that when you have something like this and you fire off a connection to MySQL and you say, hey, I want to do this query. Okay, but the rest of your script has already gone by and potentially sent a response to the user because it's asynchronous and that's how JavaScript is. So what we need to do here is say, get the connection and then I'm going to do a query and I'm going to wait for that query to return me some results and then I'm going to do something with the data and then I'm going to return it to the user in sequence. So in order to do this, um, we're probably going to have to install a promise library and I think it's called Bluebird. So let's, let's take this, let's kill this, and say npm install bluebird. Cool, we can start our server again now. And to use bluebird, I need to go look up from my notes. Uh, let me go over to here and Okay, so it's just require. So we'll, we'll do this at the top here. Oops. We'll go to the top here and say uh, var promise equals require bluebird. And in our connection now, we can return uh, promise dot from callback and this is going to take a function that gets a callback and here we're going to return connection dot query and that query is going to take it's going to take a select everything from posts it's going to take an array and a callback. And so the array is, if, because these are um, automatically, these are uh, what you call um, hmm, prepared SQL statements. So anywhere we use a, want to pass a variable like an ID, which we'll do here, we'll use a question mark, and then we pass our data here in this array. <clears throat> so after the callback, uh, we have a parenthesis, we have a squiggly bracket, and a comma, and we're going to pass in a parameter here, uh, multi-args true. Bum, 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 dot then, and now here in the then, uh, we get our results from the query result. So at this very point we could just return those results. Um, I see I have five percent left. I might need to do this in the next video. But here and so we'll just do something very simple just so you can see that it works. We'll do uh, res dot result or res dot send result And we'll switch over. Oh, we're getting an error there, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll switch over to here. We'll refresh. There's some error. Promise.callback is not a function. It's because I spelled it wrong. I know I'm going to die soon. I'm trying to go quick. Boom. Now we got some information. Uh, and I'm going to have to go in here and see what these other things are. But this is a good start. Let me stop this recording so I don't uh, lose this when my computer dies. And in the, next, uh, in the next video, we'll continue right where we left off, right here, and, um, and polish this up, and then we'll go start working on React.